the book of John, chapter 20. And uh, we're about, we're finishing up this uh, book that I'm going to send you. We've got one more chapter, and we'll be done right off with John 20. It's the, uh, I'm already thinking about the next book that I'm going to send you. That's okay. It's the, uh, remember, well, this chapter is about, about how people believe, or what they need to see to, some people need to see believe, some people need to hear believe, and I'm going to send you some people, uh, Need more evidence among to believe. It goes in some people just believe. And that's the way it's going here. Así no, así no está aquí. Pero if you look at the special emphasis of the Señor, a lot of us, a lot of us, we think of Thomas that he needed to see to believe. But not so when you read the chapter verse by verse. And all of us, you know, it's the, uh, what's it, uh, John didn't believe that he saw the evidence, and I'm going to verse 8. It's that Mary saw Jesus, she didn't believe until she heard his voice, then she believed. The disciples didn't believe until Jesus showed them, and what was the other, the, until Jesus showed them where they pierced him. And then they, then they believed. And Thomas, at the end, he needed to see more stuff to believe. And I'm going to say, you know, uh, you see how it goes increasing, the faith goes increasing. Because, you know, you know, Thomas, we say he's doubting Thomas, but you know, the thing is, I'm going to say, you know, that he was set, he was, uh, we, we, we see it in another angle, right, I'm going to say, the truth is, about Thomas, and my, you might call him uh, Doubting Thomas, and my, but the, the thing is, all of them were Doubting, and my, we'll see at this time. So, okay, vamos and uh, we'll get to God's Word. And we read all the way to verse 17 last time, so we're going to start in verse 17 this time. Okay, vamos a orar, Father, we give you glory and honor for everything that you do. Open our eyes, open our ears, open our hearts to understand, receive your Word. Uh, we give you thanks for the word we're about to receive. In the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, your Son, we ask and pray, Father. And I give you glory and honor forever, Father. We give you thanks for the word we're about to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Amen. Ya que me sirve, pueden tomar sus asientos. Hermano, Señor, este, as I told you, hermano, Señor, pay special attention to those that see and believe. And uh, John didn't believe until he saw the evidence. You know? But he, it, it took, it took, it just took them a little bit of evidence that Jesus had risen again. He saw about know, the bandage that wrapped around his head, and about know, laying where it was orderly, you know, like if he had taken it off. And John saw it, and he believed. But not Peter. Peter was just wondering. You know? I thought, I thought wondering. Mary, you know, Mary Magdalene. She's the one that woke up early in the morning and, and went to look for the body of Jesus. But she found the stone rolled over. And she went crying and weeping. They have taken my Lord. I can't find him. And they ran and she went to go to the disciples. John and Peter ran. And remember, one of them got there before the other. John took off faster. I mean, took off first. But Peter got there first. I mean, I mean, Peter took off, but John got there first, and then Peter got there second, and Peter went in, and John just stood out. Praise God. Some people need to see more things to believe, and Peter needed to see more. John had seen it all, and he believed. Verse 8, he said, Then went in also the other, which is John, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw, and Believe. In other words, John, I mean, I, I said it wrong. John got there second. Or not, I mean, John got there first. He outran Peter. I think I said that last time. You know? Then Mary, she goes, she starts weeping. Oh, you know, I don't know when they took my Lord. You know, Jesus had already told them that he was going to rise again on the third day or after the third day. And Mark 8 31. They didn't believe. And I'm going to say, and my Lord said, she sees two angels. Quite possibly Angel and Gabriel. I mean, Angel Gabriel and Angel, Ga uh, Angel Michael. Michael and Gabriel. Quite possibly. Because one was the announcement of the, 
of the great birth. The other one, Michael, the archangel, is the one that, and the one you know, the one that's going to fight against Satan and other you know. The two great archangels, I believe. And one goes, and they ask her, hey, <laughs> who are you looking for? <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Jesus was a man of her. And Jesus asked her, hey, well, why do you weep? Who are you looking for? Well, why are you weeping? You should be rejoicing. <laughs> you know, who are you looking for? A dead Savior? You're looking for a dead body? And one goes, and you know, she couldn't recognize the voice. It's because sometimes we hear God's voice and we don't even know it's God talking to us. You know? We don't know if this happens to us or that happens to us and, and we, don't, we don't acknowledge that it's God talking to us. She didn't recognize it was Jesus that was talking to her until he said, Mary. Whoa. That caught her attention. It was this Jesus, Rabba, Rabboni, my master. Oh, Senor. The sheep hear my voice. They know me and hear my voice and they follow me. Right? John 10, 27. A stranger's voice will they not hear. Right? John chapter 10, verse 4 and 5. And she heard that voice. And that's when she believed. When she heard, she believed. See, John only saw evidence and he believed. She saw Jesus. She didn't believe it was Jesus. She saw him. She didn't recognize him until she heard his voice and then she believed. And she runs to Jesus wanting to hold him, wanting to, to hug him. And that's what Jesus says in verse 17, this is where we're going to start. Jesus said unto her, this is where we start, in the name of Jesus, in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He said, Jesus said unto her, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren, my brothers, and say unto them, I ascend unto my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. The word hold here, hermano Señor, is haptomi or haptomai in the Greek. What does that word mean? Does it mean like, like touch, hermano Señor? What does it mean? The word means, hermano Señor, to, to attach oneself to, to cleanse, to attach oneself to. That is to say, to touch in many applications, in many relations. Hermano, the companion Bible, hermano Señor, I have a companion Bible, and that one's a, a Greek uh, Greek uh, doc, doctor of the Greek. I trust him, hermano, and some. And he says, hermano, that that word in the Greek means do not hold me. No me. Do not hold me. In other words, don't stop me. Do, no me detengas. Like we say in Spanish, no me detengas. Detengas can mean hold me, like grab me and hold me. Or no, no me detengas can mean like don't, don't, let me go. I'm, I gotta go do something first. Don't stop me. Don't, don't withhold me. That's what it meant. It means don't withhold me. No me detengas. I got something to do. And my was saying, if you look at the Blue Letter Bible, and it translates it like this, why am I making a big deal out of it? Because Jesus let Thomas touch him. And he says here, for I am not yet ascended to my father. See, don't touch me. You'd be like, well, didn't Thomas touch him? And then if you read over there in, in, uh, in the Gospels, in the other Gospels, you see that even the disciples touched him. So how is this? And he says, I have not yet ascended to my father. So one starts asking questions. I go, why is, does it seem like it's contradicting? So you got to study the Greek and you'll find out. And one of the, the, the Blue Letter Bible says it like this. This is the translation. It makes sense. He said, embrace me not. In other words, spend no more time with me now. In a joyful gratulations. Uh, For I am not yet immediately going to ascend to my Father. You will have several opportunities to see me again, but 
Go tell my brothers that I shall depart to my God and your God. My God and your God. Praise God. In other words, he's telling me, hey, don't hold me back. No me detengas. You know, there's going to be other opportunities for you to touch me, now, but not right now. You just go tell my brothers that I'm fixing to go to my father. Not right now, but I'm fixing. Later on, I'm going. And, and that, to me, makes a lot of sense. And well, because did you guys start asking the question, well, did Jesus uh, send to the Father first, and then he came back down? And my little Señor Pedro, you see it, my little Señor, like I said, Jesus wanted that part, like last time that I said, Jesus wanted that special opportunity to be healed. She didn't want to give it to Mary. And my little Señor, and uh, the companion Bible, the man was the Señor, and said, my little Señor, that, that reminding us that Jesus was the first fruits of the dead. No one <laughs> and he, and the first fruits of the animals. And the dead, you got to present them to God, Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 10 and 11, the first fruits. Jesus being the first fruit of the dead, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 23, he had to present himself to the Father first. Before he presented himself to anybody else. So that too makes sense. And I was saying, yeah, I understand you because that way you can try to make sense for yourself. You know? Praise God. I always give you choices to believe. You can be a believer now, whatever. But I'm telling you, there are things that make sense. Okay? <laughs> All right? In case you ever ask the question, well, what's it right here? I haven't sent to my father. And why does he not let her touch him? But then he lets the disciples touch him. And then he lets Thomas touch him. Did he say to the, I said to the Father or not? So if my listen, those will answer your questions right there. Either one of them will answer your question. Either, either one of those explanations will answer your question. Okay? Praise God. Okay, the next thing is, Jesus says here, man, I mean, this verse has a lot of controversial things. First of all, that, that uh, did he ascend first to the Father or what? What was he saying? Well, the Greek tells us that, hey, don't hold me back. Okay? It doesn't say, don't touch me. It says, don't hold me back. No me punish. That's what it means. Okay? I got other business to attend to first. That's what that word meant. Okay. Then it says there, I ascend unto my father and your father, and to my God and your God. Here the question is not, is the father God? Because we all believe, no matter what religion, not what, no matter what religion you follow, we all know that the Father is God. The question in question is, or the, the thing that we need to question is, here is Jesus God. Is Jesus saying that his Father is God only? Making it look like my Father, my Father, my God, and your God. Is Jesus saying that he's not God here? No, because in verse, look at verse 28 in the same chapter it says, And Thomas answered and said unto Jesus, unto him, My Lord, my God. So what is Jesus saying here? He's saying, Because my Father is my God, that automatically makes my Father your God as well. Okay, it's like saying, my, God, my father is your father. So that makes him and my was him. My grandpa is my grand is your grandpa as well. My mom is your mom. My God is your God. Remember he says, brethren. Saying my father is your father because we're brothers. Uh -huh. It says there in the, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 2. And verse 11, it says that, that, that he was not ashamed to call us brothers. I don't know those things, but I'm. For he that sanctified and he that is sanctified is one. To whom he is not ashamed to call us brothers or brethren. We're his brothers. And at the same time, Jesus is also God. Because he's the only one that came out of God. And that's why Thomas, when he says Jesus, he said, My Lord, my God. 
So well, the question here, mother, is that the controversial thing is, is a lot of people say, well, Jesus is the same there. He, he's not God. He doesn't say that. He's just saying that my father is your father, my God is your God as well. But I say, no. He's not saying that Jesus is not God. Because we know through a lot of scriptures in the Bible you know, that Jesus is God. It says there in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, it says, without controversy, God was manifested in the flesh. Who was manifested in the flesh? God. Through who? Through his son Jesus. Who was manifested? God. And it says there in Matthew 1, 23, you should call him name, his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. In John 1, 1, what does that word say? And the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God. Jesus is God. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8, the Father calls Jesus God. And in Hebrews 1, 8, well, so you know, so can look up all those scriptures and all those, but you know what? Yesterday, and when I was going over Luke chapter 8, because I was hearing the book of Luke, and I noticed something I never noticed before. And I want to share with you in the book of Luke chapter 8, and in verse what, 39. And this is after Jesus takes out demons from, uh, from this person. And I was, you know, this person wants to follow him. But Jesus says there in verse 39, Return unto thy own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. So what did Jesus command him to do? To go show what the great things that God did unto him, right? God unto him. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things who? Jesus had done unto him. Amen. So who was he saying that was God? Saying that God was Jesus. Because Jesus told him, go and tell everybody what great things God has done in your life. And he went and told him what Jesus done in his life. So he knows that Jesus is God. But I'm going to so, okay, and well, I know well, that God, this church knows that Jesus is God. And I'm going to so I don't need to spend too much time on that. Right? So, okay, and we know that Jesus is the Savior and that God is the Savior. And I have many scriptures. But I'm going to say, you know, it's the Acts 13.23, Titus 2.13, Philippians 3.20, 2 Timothy 1.10, and about well, 1 Timothy 4.10, 1 Timothy 1.1, 1, 1, 1 Timothy 2, verse 3, God the Savior. And I'm going to say, you know, so, let's go to verse 18. Right? Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples, his brother, the brethren, that she had seen the Lord. That she had what? Seen the Lord. See, we over here always judging Thomas. Well, judge, Thomas had to see and believe. Well, she saw and she still didn't believe. <laughs> she had to hear Jesus. When Jesus said, Mary, that's when she believed. Well, she had seen the Lord. And then he had spoken these things unto her. You know? well, so, you know, Mary Magdalene, in whom seven evil spirits were cast out, out of her. Luke chapter 8, verse 2. Mary Magdalene well, never left Jesus when Jesus was being crucified. And well, so, you know, Mary Magdalene. Luke 24, verse 10 and 23. These are the scriptures. Luke 24. And my blessing on verse 20, Luke 24, verse 10. I'm going to read that scripture. My blessing on these And it was Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, the other women that were with him, them, which told these things unto the disciples. <laughs> Look at verse 23. And when they found out his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which saying that, they, that he was alive. Okay, now let's go to verse 19. John 20, verse 19. Then the same day, the same day, remember, Jesus had resurrected sometime early Sunday morning, first day of the week. Right? The, remember, the, the, the start of the day was 6 o'clock. Right? And then the end of the day was 6 o'clock, 12 hours in the day. We are already approaching 12 hours. 12. 12 hours in a day. Okay? This is significant because Jesus says there in Mark 13, you don't know when the Son of Man shall come. 
if you will come in in the in the in my you know, at the uh, dawn break at six or at the midnight mm, six I mean the six hour or the evening six o'clock p.m. or if you will show up in the morning seven o'clock in other words does Jesus come at six 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 or does he come at seven I don't know what I'm saying wow so okay, here we see the both hours the twelve the six in the morning and then now at 6 p.m. Verse 19 says, Then say the same day at 6 o'clock p.m. evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut. <laughs> In other words, it was already getting dark. Okay, first God. The doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. <laughs> Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you and I'm going to say so look at they were they were hiding they were uh, in, they were and while they had seen what the Jews did to Jesus and while the Señor is there in many places right? John 11 8 tells us about that the disciples were concerned about Jesus they you want to go over there the Jews want to kill you and sure did they killed Jesus and they're going to say, well, we were hanging out with Jesus. They're going to kill us too? Oh, first time. And the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15, and we will know that the Jews are the ones that killed Jesus. The Bible says there. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13, 14, and 15, it tells us that well, the Jews are the ones that killed Jesus. 1 John chapter 2, were not the so-called Jews, but the post type Jews. In other words, those that call themselves Jews and are not. He says, both who both killed the Lord Jesus. Yeah, for you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which are in Judea, are in Christ Jesus. For you also have known suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they pleased not God, and are contrary to all men. As it is written in the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 14 and 15, and what goes in your and you be or deny the Holy One. And I praise God. No, you killed the Holy One. And I close in you. It says there in Marcos and Yoke. And desires unto yourself a murder. They, they, uh, they pick Barabbas over Jesus. And I close in you. It says there in uh, Acts chapter 3 and verse uh, 14. It says at 15 that I close in you. They said. But you deny the Holy One and just and desire of murder to be granted unto you and kill the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof you are witnesses. So they saw what they did to Jesus and they were afraid. They would have fear. When they were with Jesus, they, didn't have, they weren't afraid. And now that Jesus was dead, they were very afraid. When they shouldn't have been afraid, they should have known that Jesus was alive. That Jesus, and among us, you know, that he resurrected. But no, Taman Yesu, in the little room, shut up, and with fear. He said, the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. You see, you shut their doors when you have fear. Did you hear that? Did you hear that message real quick? Did you hear that message? You shut the doors when you have fear. Huh? Praise God. And you're not going to understand. Goes and you're not going to have understanding and all because you have that fear. But the Bible says in, in the book of Joshua, one night, it says, No tengas miedo. He said, well, No desmayes. Right? Do, not, do not faint. Do not fear. For for I am with you, the rappers got this again, Jose Uno Nueve, the rappers in the business. No temas ni desmayes, porque Jehová tu Dios estará contigo donde quiera que tu vaya. He said, Be a strong, be a good courage, be not afraid, neither be dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, wheresoever thou goest. Right? My, one of my favorite verses is in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 41, and verse 10, he said, La escritura, it said, Fear the Lord, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. 
Yeah, I will uphold help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And I can just there in Romans 8, 15, that God has not given us a spirit of fear, again, to bondage, but the spirit of adoption in which we cry, Abba, Father, Abba. Glory Señor. And they had fear. Y donde hay temor, praise God, hay tormento. Where there is fear, hermanos, there is all uh, check. I mean, let me read it, hermano, Señor. First John 4, verse 18. Well, verse 17. Herein is the love of God made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he said, so are we in the world. As he is, so are we in the world. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. So as see, fear is not of the Lord. Fear is torment. These guys were afraid of the Jews. Sometimes we shut ourselves up. We shut ourselves up. Because we're afraid of the Jews. We're afraid of what? The mainstream religion might say. And one of those like it says there in John chapter 12. And this is scripture, well, not me as a scripture. So, and they say, they say I in John chapter 12 and verse 42, nevertheless, among the chief rulers also many believed in Jesus, but because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they love the praise of men. More than the praise of God. Well, I'm not going to say that I don't believe in the rapture because they can, they're not going to be my friends anymore. No, Señor. You know what, hermano? I don't believe in the rapture. No, Señor. And, and yeah, we lost a lot of friends. And we lost, me and my dad, we lost a lot of so called hermanos because we started telling them that there was no rapture. But when we shut our, we, when we, hermano, when we shut, we shut up ourselves, hermano, in that fear. Of the Jews. And uh, we, we need to make known, everybody. we don't have need to have fear. We, there's no need for, to shut ourselves up. Okay, everybody. there's no need to shut ourselves up. And my God said, you know, I, and look what, look how Jesus took up that fear. He said, peace be unto you. Because remember John 14, he said, my peace be with you. Not like the world giveth. And I'm just saying, let your heart not be troubled, neither let it be afraid. How? With his peace. And that's why Jesus said, My peace be with you. Shalom in the Hebrew. Peace, prosperity, security, safety. Shalom, peace be unto you. And the peace of God is what passes on in understanding. The peace of God is what casts out and my God, Señor, you know, that's what we see in my that tranquility. That peace that God gave us. He said, I am about John 16, 33. These words I give unto you that that and my God, Señor get. He said, these things I've spoken unto you that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of a good cheer, I have overcome the world. And remember, who's our peace? Jesus is our peace. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 14. And my and going to try to come on every, every uh, Monday. Because we study a whole chapter on Mondays. Oh, Senor. Yes, they, uh, we're learning this Monday that Jesus not only is our, ho uh, is our hope, or I mean, not only is our peace, he's our hope. And not only is our hope, he's our life everlasting. He's our everything. Well, Señor. And not only that, we learned that Jesus was God, hermano del Señor, without a doubt. In 1 Timothy chapter 1. And not only that, we learned that God has enabled us and given us a special talent. And He has entrusted us with the gospel. And hermano del Señor, that even though we're sinners, and that we don't sin, and because we're, we're sinners, but we, we're sinners because we sin. Okay? We're sinners because we sin. Not we sin because we're sinners. 
Well, I'm going to sin because I'm a sinner. No. No. I'm a sinner because, you know, sometimes I sin. I fall short. Okay? All right. You see how in the verse, uh, verse 20, John 20 and verse 20. John 2020. 20. Remember, 2020, see, vision. He said, and when they had so said, he showed unto him, unto them. Because they, they didn't believe him until they what? Until they saw. So Jesus showed them. So this message about, hey, you see, I mean, you believe because you see, blessed are those that see not and yet believe. That message was for all of them because all of them had to see. Because they not only Thomas, but all of them had to see. John had to see evidence. Mary saw Jesus, but she had to hear his voice. The disciples did not believe until they saw. Jesus had to show them. This is right there. Let's read it again. It says, And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands and his side. So he had to show them, show them where they had pierced him. Where they had pierced him on the side. In John 19, verse 34. To make sure that, to make sure he would, and my Lord Senor, to make sure he was dead. They broke the bones out of all the, the, the ones that were crucified. But not Jesus. When they came to Jesus, they poked him in the side. And out of him came water and blood. I can see. Signifying his baptism, signifying his forgiveness. And not only that, his hands were pierced. So here's evidence that they did pierce his hands, as it is written there in Psalm 22 and verse 16. The dogs have compassed me, but I go, Señor, they have they have pierced my hands and my pierced my feet. Bless Señor. Pero, también remember Jesus had told them, if if you see. Oh, you hear another Jesus show up, something like that, and I go, Senor. Do not believe, and I go, Senor. But I believe, in my Senor, that not only is he referring to, this is my belief, if you want to believe it or not, but look at Zechariah chapter 13. Okay? Look at this, my Senor. Zechariah chapter 13. If you want to see what I'm talking about here in my listen. Look at Zechariah 13, 1. He said, In that day, meaning when Jesus comes, there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. Verse 2. And it shall come to pass in that day, meaning the day of the Lord, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols out of the land. No, no more gods, no more idols. And they shall no more be remembered. And I will call the prophets that un unclean spirit to pass out of the land. No, he's going to get rid of all the demons. Okay? When? When he comes. Verse 3. And it shall come to pass that when any shall yet prophesy, then his father and his mother that began him shall say unto him, Those shall not live, for those speakers lies in the name of the Lord. And his father and his mother that began him shall trust him through when he prophesies. Hey, you, you, you deceived a lot of people. All you were teaching is lies. And we're still talking about, about when Jesus comes. And look at verse 4. And it shall come to pass in that day, the day of the Lord, that the prophet shall be ashamed, every one of his vision, when he hath prophesied. And be, God is going to shame him so much that they shall not wear a, a, a rough garment to deceive. In other words, they're not going to be able to dress a robe. They're not going to be able to put a, a priest robe. Or dress like a prophet or a preacher. Because they deceive so many people. And verse, look at verse 6. And this is talking about the day of the Lord. Look at verse 6. And one shall say unto them, what are these wounds in thine hands? Look at that. 
Don't you find it awesome when Moses is saying, look at that. A lot of people don't see this, but look. It says, and that's when Jesus comes. It says, one shall say unto Jesus, what are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer him, those which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Away go sword against my shepherd, against the man that is my fellow, says the Lord of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. Wow. And my blessing them. So he's talking about that day when he comes again. And here, they wanted what? They wanted to see his side, like in Zechariah chapter 13. Not only that, they wanted to make sure he was Jesus. They wanted to make sure it was him. Why did they have so much doubt that it was him? And you know what? I'll leave that there. Okay? Why did they have so much doubt that it was Jesus? Tell me. They thought him. They thought maybe he could be somebody else imitating Jesus. Why would they not believe Jesus? Because it says in Zechariah 13, it says, when he comes, when Jesus comes again, then you will ask him, let me see your sign. And he will say, what are these signs? I mean, when they, they would ask him, why, why do you have these wounds on your hands? And he would say, these are my friends that did this to me, or so my so-called friends did this to me. And my Lord said, so why the disciples seeing Jesus, why well, they still needed to see more evidence to believe it was a real Jesus. <laughs> Why? Maybe he was not so crazy after all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He said, yeah. Jesus appeared to them. Mm -hmm. But still they wanted more evidence that it was Jesus. And I'm listening, okay? <laughs> he said, in verse 20, in verse 21, he said, and, I mean, verse 20, and when Jesus had said to, so said, he showed them to him his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad, oh, this is Jesus. When they saw the Lord, you didn't think they, you, you didn't think they could recognize the Lord? You don't think they could recognize him? They had to touch him. They had to see the wounds to believe. So Jesus, so Jesus showed it to them. They were making sure it was the real Jesus. They were trying to make sure it wasn't some imitator. You get that? I'm not listening now. Then said Jesus unto them. He said, and then they were glad when they saw the Lord. When they what? When were they glad? When they saw the Lord. So they too did not believe until they saw. Okay? Even if you want to, you don't want to take into consideration what I said or whatever, but you still got to see that they didn't believe until they saw. That's when they were glad. They were sad. They were crying. They thought that Jesus was dead. But when they saw the Jesus, when they saw the Lord, they were glad. See, your mourning only lasts a little bit. But when you see Jesus, that mourning, that sadness, goes away. It's for a little bit. Whatever you're going through is for a little bit. Jesus said, I will turn your tears into joy. And I can see John, what is John 16 and verse what, 20, right? Do you see that? Verily I say unto you, that you shall weep but lament, but the world shall rejoice, and you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. You know? Listen, look at verse 22. And you now therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. So once they knew that it was Jesus, they had joy. Enjoy no man take it away from you. See, when you found Jesus, when you found the Word, when you find the truth, man, you find joy. Because the Word is 
the one that brings joy to God. Jeremiah 15, 16. And look at verse 21. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace, again he said, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send I you. Praise God. I send you the Father, I send you. I give you a commandment. My Father gave, sent me. Praise God. Now I'm going to send you. Like it's written there in John 17. And verse 18 and 19. Que dice la escritura. It says, As though I sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. For they say, I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. No? And look at verse 23. I mean, Que sigue, hermano, Señor. Dice, uh, verse 22. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and says to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. And well, you can ask me a question. Did they receive the Holy Spirit right there? Or was it like, Receive ye the Holy Spirit later on? Well, if you read the book of Acts, you will see about that they did not receive the Spirit until Jesus ascended to the Father. On the 40th day and on the 50th day, the day of Pentecost, is when He sent His Holy Spirit and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. But with this breath that Jesus was breathing on them, and my Lord Señor, it reminds me of when Jesus breathed inside, or when God, the Father, breathed into Adam. And gave them the gift, the spirit of life. And I, John, at Genesis, if I'm not mistaken, I think it's Genesis 2, verse 7 and 8. I pray, my Lord, Señor, he said, Genesis, me parece, my Lord, Señor. He said, Genesis chapter 2, if I'm not mistaken, he said, he said, and the Lord, well, he said, and the Lord formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril. The breath of life, and man became a living soul. So that represented the spirit, the breath of life. That's what Jesus was breathing on them. The breath of life. Oh, yeah. the breath of life. But I want you to see another thing. A lot of people don't understand this verse without first that but I think Jesus was referring to this verse to men. Where it says here in John chapter 3, he said, he, uh, in verse, uh, verse 6 and 7 and 8, says, That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto you, must be born again. Verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth, and though here is the sound thereof, but cannot tell. Whence it come? See, Mary, she could hear the voice of God, but she didn't know it was God. She didn't recognize it was God. A lot of us, and what we can hear God's voice, but we don't even know if it's God's word or if it's God's word. You see, when you have the Spirit of God and you're anointed of God, you can tell what is God and what is not from God. And He said, and whether it goeth. So everyone that is born, he said, but cannot tell when it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Praise God. <coughs> you see that is? He was telling them they're going to be born of the Spirit. They're going to receive the Spirit. Praise God. And they're, they're, they're going to know God's Word. They're not going to be like, Oh, where does this come from? Where does it come from? They know where it comes from. Jesus was breathing it on them. The Holy Spirit. Not like Mary, like, well, Jesus, Jesus asked her, who, uh, why, why are you crying? Who are you looking for? She didn't recognize Jesus. She goes, hey, if you're the gardener, hey, you better tell me where you, where you put Jesus' body so I can go get him. And Jesus says, Mary. And she goes, Jesus, like, Rabbanai. When you're born of the Spirit, you're 
to know where it comes from. That, that wind, where it comes from. In other words, the spirit, where it comes from. You're not going to be like, hmm, I wonder if that's true or not true. Well, you're going to know, okay? And I believe Jesus was referring to that too. When he breathed, when he breathed on them. Huh? Praise God. Yes, they are. Today, when you see a lot of prophets or so-called pro preachers or evangelists, they start breathing on people. Whatever. Right? And then to them, they're giving the Holy Spirit. No one wants to a bunch of bad breath. And I'm That's what they're yeah. giving you. No, you receive the Holy Spirit not when they breathe on you. You receive the Spirit when you believe. That's when you receive the Spirit. Not when they blow that bad breath on you, Hermano Señor. Like a joke. Oh man, something happened in this church. I'm not going to mention it. Okay, praise God. Maybe Johnny can tell you. Yeah, I didn't hear you. <laughs> but you, know, you don't receive the spirit when they breathe on you. You receive the spirit when you believe, okay? When you believe in his name. Right? No, I don't want to go to the You know the Mogilista? The evangelist came one day and he started breathing, you know. And, and uh, he went to Johnny and Johnny, when he had bad breath, and, well, and Johnny started gagging. <laughs> No, no, no. He said, in verse 20, verse 23, it says, Whatsoever sins, he said, in, he said, and when he had said these, he breathed on them and said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Spirit. Verse 23, he said, Whosoever sins you remit, you know, you know, look at this verse. A lot of Bibles say, whichever sins you forgive. But here the King James says, whichever sins you remit. And then you look at that word in the Greek, remit. And it means to send away. To make them go. In other words, every sin, every sin you send or send or, or, or a command to go, it's going to go. And all those things. That's the way you, you command that sin to go away. Command it, let it go. It's going to go. It's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. Whatsoever sin you may go, it's going to be gone. And unto them, and whosoever sins you retain, they are retained. And when does, when does the sin go? When does your sin go? When you repent. When you give it to Jesus, you gotta let it go. See, a sin, a sin is forgiven when you let it go. When, when do you let it? And he, in Greek, that word means to let it go. Who do you let go of that sin to? To Jesus. And Jesus did that sin, and when he crucified on the cross. Not only that, the, the book of Malachi, or yeah, Malachi tells us that he planted or planted in the depths of the sea, never to be remembered again. Chapter 7, verse 18 and 19, you know? And look at verse 24. It doesn't, a lot of people get that there, Mongo Señor, that, oh, I can forgive your sins. Come to me and confess your sins, and I can forgive them. Give me uh, 200 Bloody Marys, and your sins are forgiven. And well, that's not what that verse is saying. No man can forgive sins, only God. Amen. That's why Jesus was forgiving sins on this earth, because he's the only one that can forgive sins. Yes, you can forgive people's faults, people can offend you, you can forgive them. You're supposed to forgive them. Because if you don't forgive, God will not forgive you. ¿verdad? Praise God. Pero también al mismo tiempo, hermano Señor, only God has the power to wash away your sins. Man. Not man, oh, oh, just give me about 300, 400, 400 push-ups and your sins are forgiven. Go and walk uh, on your knees, a mile to Saint whatever. Your sins will be forgiven. When Jesus already paid the price 
And one goes, and he already died on the cross for you. You just gotta believe, repent, and, well, and be and be saved. And I'm gonna say no. Verse 24. But Thomas, one of the twelve, called Dinimus, you know what that word Dinimus means? It means twin. Plus you know. My question is, are you like Thomas? Are you a twin with Thomas? Are you like him? A double? <laughs> Good Senor. Was not with him when Jesus came. He wasn't with G Thomas was not with them when Jesus came. He missed out. Okay, he wasn't there. Verse 25. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I shall see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. Because Thomas, the mom goes, you know, he was, you get the, the levels of faith. John, John, the level of John, John, all he saw was, he saw evidence and he believed. That's all it took him to believe. A lot of us, you know, we're convinced real quick. Like, and one goes in, like, uh, what's his name? Up here in John chapter 1. It's the, um, uh, they don't, they let me know. Okay, real quick. Come on, Philip. And one goes in, Philip and Nathaniel. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can there, the way of it, because Nathaniel said unto Jesus, When knowest thou me? Jesus answered and said, Before, before that Philip called thee, when thou was under the tree, I saw. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of kings of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto you, he said, that I saw you under a fig tree, you believe me? <laughs> Those shall see greater things than these. He said, Verily I say unto you, hereafter you shall see heaven and open, and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. See, Nathaniel, man, Jesus just told him that, hey, I saw you in the victory. He believed, real quick. And, and Jesus is like, hold on here. Hold on here. Not everybody does miracles. Not everybody does the signs. That means they're from God. Remember the angel that was healing people? In the book of John, chapter 5, that all the other Bibles leave out. Because you know, only John, only the, the King James mentions it, mentions it. Because I wonder why they left it out. <laughs> and they tell you they leave it out. They go John chapter 5, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, and then they go, verse 5. Well, where's verse 4? Put out the verse 4. Just look. I'm not lying to you. Look at any NIV, ESV, NLT, whatever other Bible you want to look. They're not going to have for chapter 5 or 4. They lift it out. Because Jesus was going to teach us a lesson here in John. That, como dije mi papá, no, no, por qué usan Stacy y es pachuco. That's what my dad would say. No, no, por qué tienen Stacy y es pachuco. That's what my dad would preach a long time ago. And not just because they do miracles and signs, does that mean they're from God? John 3.34 says, He that is sent of God teaches the words of God. And Thomas, I have another view of Thomas now. And well, Thomas wanted to make sure it was Jesus. The disciples told him, it's Jesus! We saw Jesus! And Thomas said, no, not that quick. I got to make sure it's him, not an imitator. What if it's a devil? What if it's an angel? You know, a false angel. What if it's, you know, he wanted to see and believe. And he knew that. He knew the scripture in Zechariah chapter 13 verse 6. That when Jesus came, that they were going to ask him. And the question was, let me see your hands. Let me see your side. Zechariah 13 verse 6. The scripture. I never heard anybody else explain it like that. Never. I never heard that in my life. But when Mirai tries to cry 13 6, that when Jesus comes again, they're going to ask him, hey, who are those wounds from? Who gave you those wounds? And that is exactly what Thomas is asking Jesus. 
Let me see those wounds. Let me see those hands. I'm not teaching you something crazy. It's right there. You can look it up. Praise God. Right up. He said, he said, let me, if I want to see the hands of the print of the nail, put my finger into the print of the nail, and thrust my hand into the side, I will not believe. He wanted to make sure it was Jesus. Don't you understand that? Don't you see that? He wanted to make sure he got the right Jesus, not the false one, not the fake one. He wanted to get the real one. And after eight days, you get the, and after eight days, again, eight means new beginning. And after eight days again, the disciples were with within, and Thomas with him. Then came Jesus, the door being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Verse 27. Then said Jesus to Thomas, You get the way rich either. Thy finger, behold my hand, rich thither by my. What did, what did Thomas say that he wanted to do? He wanted to touch that hole. He wanted to see that side and put his, his hand through it. And, I'm all and what does Jesus tell them in another scripture in the book of Luke? Say, look for spirit. It's not a spirit, it's not a demon, it's not a phantom. Because at first, they thought it was a ghost. And I, uh, man, that's a good scripture right there. I forgot what, what scripture that. I think it's Luke 23. Well, we'll go a little later. That's Jesus. They, Jesus tells them, look, touch me. I'm not a ghost. I'm not a demon. See, they thought it was a demon. He said, a demon or a spirit does not have flesh and bones like me. Touch me. So there were some of them that were thinking that he was a devil or a demon imitating Jesus. Praise God. And all of a sudden, man, I wish I would have looked up that verse, but I'll get that. Y'all can look it up. in the book of Luke. And my good Señor, and um, good Señor, este, um, este, in verse, uh, chapter 24, and verse 39, it says, Jesus said in Luke 24, verse 39, it says, Behold my hands, my feet, that is, I myself, handle me, and see, for a spirit has not flesh and bones, as you see me have. See? Look at that verse 37 says, look at verse 37 it says, but they were terrified and affrighted, and suppose that they had seen a spirit, in other words, a, a demon. Praise God. The word demon, superhuman demon. See, they thought that Jesus was a demon imitating Jesus. Why would they think that? Well, duh, Jesus told them that there was going to come, Satan was going to come saying that he's Jesus. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? And why do the thoughts arise in your heart? Behold my hands and feet. That is, I myself had handled me and see that a spirit has not fled. I mean, a demon, a spirit, an evil spirit. Does not have flesh and bones as you see me have. So, so they thought he was a devil. They thought he was a demon. Because they, it's not me. It's right there. Okay. <laughs> now let's look over to verse 27. It says, Then said he to Thomas, Reach thither with my finger, my behold my hand, and reach thither thy hand, and thrust to my side, and be, be not faithless, but believe. But believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord, my God. Not only my Lord, my God. So Jesus is our Lord and our God. You know? Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And that goes for all of them. Because they all had to see and believe. Not only Thomas, this was for all of them. And I, we, we, we have to see to believe. And I, praise God. But he said, Blessed are those that do not see and yet believe. In other words, read it and believe it. 
He said, and many other signs truly that Jesus did the prince of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you might have life through his name. And through his name we have life. Through him, right? God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that was her believe in them and shall not die, but shall have everlasting life. John 8, 51, he that believes my word shall not never see death. John 11, 24, 25, I am the resurrection, I am the life. He that believeth in me, even though he were dead, shall live, and he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. That through his name you might have life. He that has a son has life. He that does not have a son of God does not have life. And well, these are the words of life. The, the flesh, prophet the little, the, the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. This is what gives you life. Praise God. And my was I can't wait to go to John 21. It's the, uh, it's going to get better, right, well, Senor, you know. I hope, my well, Senor, you know, I study, I try to bring out stuff, my well, Senor, that, that, uh, you know, that you, get you interested, my well, Senor, so you can get interested in God's Word. I don't do it so that you can believe what I believe. I do it so that you can start reading for yourself, and my well, Senor, so that you can find the interest in God's Word. Well, it's evil, I don't know, it might be a little bit, but I'm going to check it out. Come get out of here. It might be at the end that I am kind of some father, but I'm going to but I might have a little loose boat there, but I'm going to but I'm going to get out. And man, you can check it out for yourself. All right? Amen. Don't believe me. Don't believe anybody else. But, unless you check them out in God's Word. So let's stand up and let's let's pray. By the way, thank you for your word. But we notice that in this chapter, by the that John saw only the evidence that you had that Jesus had resurrected and he believed Mary on the other hand she saw Jesus but she didn't even recognize him as Jesus until she heard his voice and then she believed the disciples saw you Jesus but they didn't believe until you showed them the hands and the, and the feet and passed it on and Father Thomas Thomas was very reluctant to believe unless he himself touched Jesus even though Jesus was not ascended to the Father, Jesus let him touch him. He said no to Mary, but he said yes to Thomas. Because, you know, sometimes we go and judge Thomas that he was a doubting Thomas, but we all doubt at one point in our lives. Help us not to doubt, but help us believe. Because in believing in your name, there is life and life everlasting. We give you thanks, Father, for that life everlasting that is only found through Jesus Christ our Lord, who died on the cross and resurrected on that third day, and showed himself to all men to believe. And Father, and he ascended into the right hand of you, the God the Father, and Father and Lord, and maketh his spirit available to whomsoever will believe. Father, and I give you thanks and glory forever and ever. In the name of Jesus Christ, bless and pray, Father. Amen.